Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon to all of my Storm fans. This is your captain speaking. Ahoy, mateys. If you'll give me just one moment, I'm going to make sure that everybody knows that we're going to start our live stream. So I'm going to be tweeting about it on the Epic Storm's Twitter and all of our social medias and stuff like that. So bear with me as I get all of that started. Hello, everybody. Welcome in. I am here with you and eight Mishra's Bobble, Urza Bobbles. Everything is going to be an egg today, and let's hope not to drop them. How many eggs can we cram into this basket? Well, the question is easy. The answer is who knows? Um, Welcome everybody in. Uh, it's really exciting to see you. We're going to wait for everybody to get started rolling in and checking mic levels, checking music levels. Um, let's uh, talk about our deck. So this one is a little bit different. You're going to see some big changes with the Epic Storm in this version. This is not an official version. This is just something that we're testing out tonight. This is gonna have eight baubles. We have four Urza's baubles and four Mishra's baubles today. This is gonna be uh, the engine with which to fuel our galvanic relays, with which to filter through our deck with fetch lands. And, um, oh no, Bryant, you're correct. Uh, the decays are not in here. Um, let me double check the list that you sent me. Uh, we were, uh, for everybody not uh, in the know, Bryant and I were collaborating on building a deck list here, um, and we had a couple of abrupt decays in the list, um, and they're not here. What did we do? Um, interesting, your list has them. Did we cut two Thoughtseizes for the abrupt decays? No, we cut a Thoughtseize and an Ave. I think that that's what it was. Hi, Santos. It's good to see you in here. Um, Bryant, I can't remember what we ended up cutting. I know the Ave was gone, actually, now that I'm thinking about this. Uh, oh, and... Is it, I have a sideboard of 15, oh my gosh. You know what? I'm scrolling over here. Here they are. I am an idiot. Uh, they're just way off to the side. I have, I have them right here. Uh, Malone, we are trying no brainstorms, but that's not really the, the point of this build. We're trying eight 
baubles tonight. Um, Bryant, uh, as it turns out, you did send me the correct list. I've got the two abrupt decays right here, which is the reason why we're going to be starting to play green. Uh, we are having a tr having problems with um, dealing with counterbalance out of blue decks, right? This is something that we've been talking about in every single one of my streams, and abrupt decay is the greatest way to answer counterbalance. It also is just a very efficient removal spell for everything that we need to worry ourselves about in Legacy. Um, so we get abrupt decays, and we also get eight eight bobble effects um, in lieu of brainstorm so we have swapped our colors from blue to green which means we get a couple of veil of summers in the main deck we also get some zeros that really fuel our galvanic relays this is going to be something that um is exciting to take a look at how how good our are our relays um so it's gonna be interesting uh evan uh urza's bobble mishra's bobble those are cantrips veil of summer can technically be a cantrip although i don't want to use it as a cantrip we have cantrips they're just slower um Nick, uh, you're talking about hating del uh, counterbalance in the deck, or or what? Um, I'm not quite sure. So anyway, as everybody starts rolling in, um, we're gonna get started. But this is something that I'm pretty excited about, right? As Bryant pointed out, we can actually hard cast an Ave now. You know, we don't have to res rely on Lion's Eye Diamond, which, to be completely honest, wasn't that big of an issue when we were testing last week. You might want to check out that video after we're done with our live stream tonight, but Bryant and I actually um, premiered uh, the latest and greatest TES version, and uh, Slime Time Live was live last Thursday. So the rest of the deck is pretty straightforward, right? We cut a Slaughter Pact and a, um, a Pulverize for the Abrupt Decays. And then in the main board, we moved our mana base around to make it work and make sense. Um, and then we had four Urza's Bobbles instead of Brainstorms. And we've added two Veil of Summers instead of two Silence. The Veil of Summers are going to be really, really nice if we do en end up coming up against a blue deck or a black deck. Blue-black Reanimator is on the rise right now, and those discard spells can can be somewhat problematic. Um, let's see. I think that is going to be it. I'm already queued up into a league, and I am going to pull that up um, in just a little bit. But you know what I think is really nice is if you do actually end up liking these videos and you want to become a supporter of this, um, just like you're like we're locking. A, ugh, I can't speak. Just like you're watching Bryant uh, spam a lot of emotes. You can show your appreciation of the live stream or of any videos that we have and comment these emotes. You're seeing Slime Time Live, you see we have Dark Ritual, we have Ad Nauseum, we have all kinds of fun things. And if you become a YouTube member, you get all, all kinds of really cool perks and uh, not least of which is the ability to use all of those emotes. I'm gonna show you a little bit about the um, YouTube a bill, uh, 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 the YouTube members uh, support and um, after that we're going to get started in round one 
If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, early access to videos, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us such as theepicsfirm.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via theepicsfirm.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. All right, it is time to combo indeed. We are paired up in round one against Magic Dads, and I think that I want to be on the play. Just adjust that bar there for just a little bit. I'm going to play first. Well, uh, unfortunately, while we do have a new bobble and a relay in our hand, the rest of this is not looking super great. This is a very quick mulligan. And this, this is quite a hand. Uh, I am feeling pretty good about this one. Ah, uh, yes, Bryant is a magic dad uh, with a magic child. Okay, I'm going to keep this one, and I'm actually going to... Hmm. So here's a, here's a point of contention. What am I going to be putting back? Now, I want to Galvanic Relay on turn one. I think that that's going to be exactly where I'm going. And I'm going to use a Rite of Flame to do that so that I'm not burning both of these Lotus Petals. But if I do that, I can use one of the Lotus Petals and I can put the other one back or I can put back a Mishra's Bauble and have more mana but fewer cards um, in my relay turn. And I think that I want more cards because I also have this Lion's Eye Diamond which is going to let me cast any of the cards from Relay Exile that I find. So I'm going to put back a Lotus Petal here and start with six. Our opponent kept seven. And I'm gonna take a look at the mana base and get probably a bad lands. And we'll take a look at making this Rite of Flame look as innocuous as possible, and then deploying all of the rest of our spells. And then this Relay for five is going to feel pretty good. Relay for five on turn one. Unfortunately, we are not showcasing the power of Urza's Bobble, but Mishra's Bobble is equally as powerful. And especially here, we actually can see what our opponent is drawing. Um, I guess we could have looked at one of the cards in our opponent's hand as well, right? That additional information is never a bad thing. Um, okay, so two Burning Wishes, some Zeros, and a Rite of Flame. I am going to wait, just in case they're a discard deck, to bobble them in their upkeep. And they reveal an underground sea, so possibly a discard matchup. Uh, I am paid off with the decision. I don't know if it was necessarily the correct decision, if having a card in my hand right now was important for some reason, but I kind of doubt it. Okay, our bobble draw gives us a Mox Opal. Okay, and then our draw for turn is a land. Not the worst. We'll have to see how um, playing this turn ends up looking. But I'll start off with a Mishra's Bobble and a Mox Opal. Okay, that all resolved. I'll cast a Rite of Flame, which is going to make one additional mana because of the Rite of Flame in our graveyard. And then I think... So we have 
some mana available to us, but I am expecting interaction from my opponent, right? So we have three, Mox Opal makes four, Badlands is five, Fetch is six, and then Lion's Eye Diamond is seven, eight, nine, which is enough to Burning Wish into Peer into the Abyss, but we are completely open to any kind of interaction that our opponent might have. Other options that we have are going to be Burning Wish into a Galvanic Relay, Echo of Eons, or Empty the Warns. And what I want to do is Burning Wish for the first time and see what ends up happening. To do that, I'm going to play out this Mox Opal just in case I do end up needing to crack this Lion's Eye Diamond for some reason. And actually... Okay. Oliver, yeah, I could uh, I could Burning Wish for Echo. I think that I like the B Burning Wish for Thoughtseize that Bass has suggested. Um, and then I can potentially Burning Wish for an Echo. Now, obviously this is not ideal because Thoughtseize doesn't protect us post Echo. They are blue-black reanimator indeed. Okay, that is an entomb for everybody. They've gotten themselves a grizzle brand. And they're revealed cards. Maybe. Hmm. No, we might not need to echo. We might actually have lethal Bryant. Um, now, we don't have lethal yet. Because this is only... Um, 18. Oh, they have a reanimate. I could just turn off the reanimate that they have um, by putting them to two. But the second that they draw something, then they're good to go. And I'm kind of hoping that this Mishra's bobble pays off. Um... Hmm. So I think that with this, they don't have much interaction. They don't have a creature to put in the graveyard if I take this, or to put in the battlefield if I take this reanimate. So I have a pretty quick clock with a uh, goblin army. Um, yes, everybody seems to agree with me. So I'm going to take this reanimate and we're going to make a bunch of goblins. Uh, Austin, hello. Welcome to the stream. I'm glad that you could make it. We are going to absolutely destroy this reanimator player. I did that uh, last night at my locals. It was also pretty fun. So I can just crack this now. I don't need to hold priority or anything like that. And get the empty. Well, Doyle, they wouldn't have been able to draw seven because I was going to Tendrils of Agony them as the line that I was thinking about and they would have been at two. Um, they wouldn't have been able to even cast reanimate but all right and they're drawing a badlands okay i do think that we have this rolled up in game one which is really nice that means that if we do end up going to a game three and i don't just clobber them 2-0 um then i'll be on the play for game three which will be really nice so unfortunately we are going to be taking these Galvanic Relays out. I would like to be throwing a bunch of baubles in the way, right? All eight of them with Galvanic Relay seems really strong, but not the greatest spot. So we're gonna be taking Thoughtseize instead, a way to disrupt our opponent as well as protect ourselves, just like we saw the Burning Wish in turn in game one protect us with the Thoughtseize. 
Um, but we're not going to leave one in the sideboard for that. Orm's Chant is really good. Veil of Summer is excellent. Um, this protection suite is going to be really, really strong. Um, Zach, no gardens this time. Uh, that was a couple of weeks ago. Right now, we're actually testing eight baubles. So Mishra's bobble, a playset of that, and Urza's bobble, a playset of that. And it's going to just be Urza and Mishra making recompense in the epic storm. So let's submit our, our sideboarded deck and hope to um, absolutely annihilate magic dads. Hmm. This is pretty close, but I can't keep this. I only have one source of mana at the moment, and unfortunately that's not going to get there. This, however, this, however, is very nice. I will keep this. And I'm going to bottom a Badlands, actually, um, because if they have a discard spell, then they might take the Lion's Eye Diamond, and I want a Burning Wish as some kind of secondary protection. Is that true, though? Actually, I'm talking about this. And it might just be... No, I think that that's right. I think that that's right. Okay. It's bobble in time. Bobble, 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 bobble. Yes, you are correct. Um, you know, that is a consideration, absolutely. I'm not sure what uh, your name is. I don't actually uh, read anything other than English, unfortunately. Um, but I could for sure uh, bobble for the Burning Wish to gain information and make my decisions potentially easier. Um, wasn't quite on my mind. Hmm. Wow. Okay, so they had an underground sea, but it looks like they are actually just black red reanimator. Um, and if that's the case, then the blue is likely for a show and tell as a sideboard juke to remove themselves from uh, graveyard hate. And uh, they have a Traxa. So interesting. However, you know what that graveyard hate is? Echo of Eons. Echo of Eons is great graveyard hate. Uh, oh, uh, you know, uh, O'Doyle, I might have agreed with you. However, I drew a Mox Opal and it is no longer the case. That second land is better than Lotus Petal. Oh, Jason, hello. I am glad to see you in stream. Now that they've shown us that they're a Badlands version uh, with Faithless Looting, I am significantly less likely to encounter counter magic here. I'm not going to be casting an Orm's Chant at all. Um, I'm just going to be wheeling. Um, actually, hmm. I might, I might want to crack the Mox Opal, right? Uh, that's my consideration here. If I were to do that, I would want probably red floating. Um, yeah. Okay, let's do that. That's a new, um, new MTGO feature. When cards go to your graveyard, you can select the order that they go in. Um, all right, does this do it? I think this does it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, this is, hold on. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ooh, wait a second, this might not be it. Uh, no, that's not true. Wishclaw can find a, a Lion's Eye Diamond and we're all good to go. Who's the better Badlands deck now?
the only thing that I need to not do is to imprint the Burning Wish and we're gonna be good to go. Any order. I'm gonna use that to find the Tendrils of Agony, put it on the stack, all copies targeting our opponent. Look at that. Okay, it ended up being red-black reanimator, not blue-black reanimator, a significantly less worrisome opponent uh, or uh, matchup. So blue-black reanimator is a force of will combo deck. Those are typically our worst matchups, right? Because they have the interaction to beat us just like a blue deck, like a fair blue deck does but they can turn the corner and destroy us with either a Reanimator, a Doomsday, a Cephalid Breakfast combo. These are typically uh, very difficult matchups for the Epic Storm. But Red Black Reanimator, um, they're just really, really fast. And luckily, they were not that fast. So that seemed pretty okay. No need to go to a game three, no need to worry about anything about uh, surgicals or anything like that. That was really nice. So um, while we're hanging out here, I'm gonna reintroduce the deck that we're playing. Um, this is Eight Baubles. Eight Baubles, the Epic Storm. So we're not gonna buff around, we want Galvanic Relay to be as good as it can. And because of that, we're playing a playset of Urza's Baubles. And because of that, we have allowed ourselves to put green back in the deck and cut blue entirely. That allows us to play Gal uh, Galvanic Relay to its highest potential, right? Like we were talking about, all eight Baubles. Mox Opal is the best it's ever been. We can play Veil of Summer in the main deck again and we can play Abrupt Decay in the sideboard. Abrupt Decay being a really key card in the fair blue counterbalance matchups, right? That also means that we can cast a Progenitor Ooze off of our lands, which is something that we weren't able to do last week with the uh, four color non-green TES build version 13.9 that Bryant and I previewed and premiered on stream last week. So, I'm pretty excited about this one. Technically, of course, it's five color, right? I've got an Echo Vions here. I've got an Echo Vions in the sideboard, but I'm not ever gonna be casting them off of anything but a Lion's Eye Diamond, right? Um, so I think that this doesn't really count, but um, I think that it works out really nice. Um, Malone, yeah, the deck is a ridiculously high, artifact count 27 of them seems pretty strong right the it all started with the inclusion of wishclaw talisman and it really it really snowballed from there right we started we realized we could include mox opal we realized that mishra's bauble was better than ponder for us and now we're just testing out right this isn't a, an official idea or anything like that but bryant and i were talking about putting in Urza's Bobble instead of Brainstorm. I know that he had posted some videos previously about a no Brainstorm deck, right? And I think that the goal was not where it needed to be, right? Um, the goal here is actually to absolutely crush with Galvanic Relay and the Urza's Bobbles are what's gonna let us do that. Um, so our lands, as far as green sources, are Taiga, and Bayou, so yes, two green sources for sure. Um, off of our lands, yes, but we also have Lotus Petal, Mox Opal, Chrome Mox, Lion's Eye Diamond, so I, I should have been more specific. Whereas previously, we couldn't use our lands at all to help with the three green pips of Ave Progenitor Ooze. We can use our lands to help us cast it. Not completely cast it, right? But, um, they're going to be helping for sure. And you know what would help you if you were to become a Patreon? Um, 
you can get access to a lot of these ideas early. Uh, we have a member section in our Discord that are for Patreon members, YouTube members, that we can talk about some of these really cool ideas before I start streaming, and those are really nice. Um, let me tell you a little bit about our Patreon that goes to support our website and site writers like me and an Infernal Tutoring article that should be coming out live uh, for Patreon members a week early, um, hopefully Friday. So let me tell you about that. Want early access to articles at theepicstorm.com? Become a member of our patron to get articles seven days early on top of other sweet benefits and help us pay our website team. You can sign up at patreon.com slash theepicstorm. Thank you, Bryant. Uh, so I would really appreciate if you guys became Patreon members because in addition to supporting uh, site writers and things like that um, and the stream, you also get to hang out in our members section and you can talk to us about deck ideas that you have and talk to all of the site writers or Bryant uh, and, and uh, other members as well. So that's really exciting. And hey, congratulations, we've got a new man, uh, a new member. That's awesome. Um, I am so sorry. I, you know what, I actually can, I can figure this out. I've got, I've got Google Translate. I can do this. Sheng Yuhui? That's probably, Shang. Is it Shang? I'm sorry if that's not correct, but um, that's what Google Translate told me. But thank you very much for becoming a member. You have access to a lot of awesome emotes. You also have some really cool perks that are listed when you become a member. You can actually see which ones. Um, Shang, awesome. I'm so glad that Google pulled through with that one. I appreciate that. Um, super awesome that technology is helpful um, while we're waiting on our opponent to show up let's talk about um, some other ideas um, we always can remove prismatic ending right if we want to go back to green and we want brainstorm which I gotta tell you is the best card in Legacy for a reason. Um, cutting, cutting blue, or cutting blue, cutting white from this list and being able to to play Brainstorm again. I don't know. There's a lot of opportunities here, um, but man, these baubles! I can't wait to really lean into Galvanic Relay because we might not even need Brainstorm, right? These relays are gonna draw a lot more cards than Brainstorm will, and then paired with the ability to continue drawing cards, these baubles are worth two cards, right? One for the Storm for Galvanic Relay in the Exile, and then another that we draw on the upkeep to really keep our hand flush. Our opponent actually ended up pairing with us, and they have revealed a Yorion Sky Nomad. And our hand hmm, is a keep. Um, we are on the draw. Um, I'm going to keep this and we're going to see how this works. Um, bobbles. So I'm never going to keep a no land hand with a bunch of baubles. Well, I might, depends on the action, right? But I'm not going to rely on baubles to find the action that I need if I have nothing going on. Um, if I have one part of something like an Echo of Eons or a Burning Wish and I need some more mana, um, then I can certainly consider keeping a lot of baubles. Um, 
and hoping to find something. All right, so unfortunately, my opponent is representing a turn two Thalia. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about running out a relay right now. I think that it's the best thing that we can do, but I'm not sure uh, how many of our cards are actually going to be stranded in exile when they untap and play a Thalia, right? That's my concern. But we're gonna do the best that we can and see what happens. Our opponent isn't necessarily always going to have turn two Thalia backed up by a protected mother of, or protected with a mother of runes. Um, could be a Stoneforge Mystic. They're an 80 card deck. They could have a bunch of three drops and are looking to port me on turn two. I don't know. That's probably a Thalia, but uh, we'll just have to see. And just like Bass said, we were one mana short of playing a Wish Claw Talisman into the Galvanic Relay, which is a little unfortunate. Uh, let me pop this out. Bloodstained Mire, Mox Opal, Lotus Petal. Another Mox Opal. And a Lion's Eye Diamond. Okay, well, if they don't have... Actually, I can, I can uh, bobble them. And I want to bobble them now because they might have uh, an Ether Sworn. Is it an Ether Sworn Cannonist that prevents me from drawing cards? I believe so. Okay, Wasteland off the top. And a random card from their hand is Lauren of the Third Path. And our two draws are another land and a chrome box, which we don't have an imprint for. So, um, Wasteland me. Come on, Wasteland me. You know you want to do it. Do it, don't play Athalia. Mm. Okay, so this might be a Cathar's Commando. I feel pretty lucky. Um, other than drawing a bunch of mana, to have made it through that without um, hey moral support. Uh, this is not eight cast. This is eight bobble. What are you talking about? Okay. So, I'm going to play around, uh, wait, Cathar Commando requires a mana to activate, doesn't it? Um, maybe I don't actually need to concern myself with playing around that. Yeah, they didn't wasteland me. I'm not really, I'm really not sure what they're playing at, but they might just have a bunch of three drops. Um. Oh, okay, moral support. Then in that case, this is the Epic Storm. It's one of the premier storm decks of the format, and we seek to win with Tendrils of Agony. Um, it has storm, which means that it can be copied for each spell cast before it, and I can drain and gain my opponent for lethal, just 10 storm. Um, really, really nice. So, we're gonna see what happens with all of this stuff. This is all just happening, which I'm really not upset about. I am gonna have to take some extra damage because I played out a land. Um, but we're gonna add nauseum. With a lotus petal floating. 
I think I'm pretty all right with this. Now we have a bunch of threes that I don't want to reveal, but one fewer because one of them was in our opening hand. Bloodstained Mire. LED was good. Burning Wish is our way to victory. Chrome Mox and Ride of Flame. More mana. Veil of Summer is useless. More mana, more zeros, more zeros. This is another thing. Our ad nauseums with eight baubles is incredible. Um, yeah, look at this. We've revealed how many cards? 20 cards. And we're at seven. Okay, we're at four. I'm going to stop there. But, oh boy. This was fantastic. Um, our opponent can concede at any time. I don't believe they have anything, but I will play out a chant. Okay, now our opponent definitely doesn't have anything. Uh, Tendril's Echo Storm, Michael. No, it doesn't, but I guess it can in your heart. Uh, the Epic Storm is definitely the name that we're going to be using for the deck, but um, there are certainly other words that begin with the same letters. I'll say that. Um, okay, I don't even need to crack my Lion's Eye Diamonds. And Tendrils of Agony onto the stack. All copies targeting my opponent. It was a little bit of an overkill for the storm count, but I'm all right with that. Um, okay, things get a little bit harder out of the sideboard because they now know what we're playing and can mulligan accordingly. And they have things like Deafening Silence um, and Aether Sworn Cannonist and problematic cards like that. They also can potentially have cards like Mind Break Trap and um, I would really not like to lose to that, which is why I'm gonna think about keeping these chants in. Um, I might keep one in. We have these thought seizes, right? Um, maybe I don't need the idea, the decays. Um, or I can board out one of each bobble, right? Because Galvanic Relay is getting worse. Um, okay, so Gimp, the... Um, the deck that you know as Ant, or Ad Nauseam Tendrils, is a Dark Ritual, Cabal Ritual, spell-based storm deck that seeks to win with Past in Flames a lot of the time. It's a little bit of a weird misnomer that the deck named after Ad Nauseam Tendrils seeks to win more often with a different spell, in this case, Past in Flames, right? Um, and then... The Epic Storm is actually a deck that seeks to utilize Ad Nauseam the most. We win primarily through Ad Nauseam. Um, and we are a permanent-based Storm spell deck. Um, so we have all of these artifact mana like Mox Opal and Chrome Mox that the uh, Ad Nauseam Tendrils is lacking. Um, one of them is a spell-based Storm deck and then with Past in Flames as its main recursion and then we are an echo of eons permanent based uh, artifact more correctly artifact based um storm deck okay we're gonna mulligan this one yeah mountain walk that's the exactly right i play one and not the other um okay so this is a turn two ad nauseum with a turn one thought sees i'm gonna keep this and bottom the right of flame this is gonna hurt if they open up uh in their 80 card deck with a mulligan to six with a deafening silence. But if they do that, then I still have, oh, wow. Nope, okay. Then I can thought seize their Thalia and hope for good things. Oh, 
Okay, they have a Mind Break Trap, a Spirit of the Labyrinth. That's the card that I was thinking of. Um, and then Thalia. So I'm going to take the Thalia. Um, they have a Wasteland. That's a little unfortunate. What I can do is play out all of my zeros. So this is something that uh, we can do with permanents, right? Obviously, Lion's Eye Diamond and Lotus Petal are shared between the Epic Storm and Ad Nauseum Tendrils. But um, I can play out all of my artifacts. And I'm not as concerned about Storm because my engines provide a significantly more amount of Storm. Uh, Ad Nauseum Tendrils, their, their Storm combo turns are a little bit more tight um, which can be very artistic to watch uh, but it is not necessarily um, ooh, they drew a planes and they're playing a spirit <laughs> turns out ad nauseum does not draw cards the only thing that I need to do is to not draw ad nauseum right here okay cool Unfortunately, I can't play this Lotus Petal. That would be Storm 2. Ad Nauseum will be Storm 3, because I need to go through this Wishclaw Talisman as a tutor, uh, which I guess is another difference in the Storm decks. One of them is a Wishclaw Talisman deck primarily, and then the other one is primarily an Infernal Tutoring deck. We're also playing Burning Wish. There's a lot of nuance. Um, I have more black spells in my deck than red at the moment. And you cannot... Uh, yeah, they're trying to pay costs. They don't realize I've only cast two spells. They cannot Mind Break Trap this. Nice try, honey. Okay, Burning Wish, Burning Wish. Mox Opal, Dark Ritual. I need some more initial mana, and I would also like... Silence. Or Thoughtseize. That works too. Um, okay, so is this enough mana? So it's three floating. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That should be enough. I'm not going to repeat this. I am going to immediately Thoughtseize my opponent. I know all of the cards in their hand. And they're going to Mind Break Trap the Thoughtseize. You betcha. Increase that storm count just for me. TNT is not the worst deck at all. It is very good at playing a fair game, right? But it struggles somewhat against stopping things quickly. It needs time to set up, and I don't want to play a deck that gives them time to set up. So I'm going to 2-0 them, I guess. <laughs> um, there we go. Cool. So that was a pretty clean win against Death and Taxes. Um, we saw that Thoughtseize out of the sideboard helped us stop their turn to Thalia, and we got to see that they had a Mind Break Trap so we could just play around it for the rest of the game and not try to combo off until that was dealt with. Very, very nice. Those baubles were able to provide Metalcraft for a continuation of the game from uh, Post Ad Nauseum, which was really nice. I'm going to start up with a new uh, new league, and I'm going to talk to you about a deck list that you can find below. It actually links to Moxfield, which is a sponsor of the Epic Storm, kind of support each other, and Moxfield is a really, really cool way to keep track of all of your decks and things like that. Let me tell you a little bit about it right now. 
Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a Magic deck online. They support over 30 formats, including Legacy and many other Eternal formats. There are so many options to view decks the way that you want, from text view to individual cards, mana value, and even card price. There's also light mode and dark mode. My personal favorite feature is card tags. This way you can sort cards by function. Moxfield supports collection tracking, scryfall search, deckless feedback, and so much more. Follow me on Moxfield.com so you can stay updated on all of my decks. So you can always follow um, the Epic Storm on Moxfield to get our most up-to-date deck lists. Um, and when you do that, you can also see all of the previous deck lists that the YouTube channel, really Bryant, has played, as well as the most up-to-date, the Epic Storm deck list. And it actually tracks all of the changes so that you can see each change that we've made along the way for the Epic Storm. Uh, it's really, really cool. Um, tool and you know they're always changing things they have a really active um, information discord that tells you bugs that are fixed and it's it's just really really nice we've been paired up for round three which I have been keeping a very poor uh, keeping poor track of my record but now it says uh, there yeah it's 2-0 Alrighty, um, I won the die roll, even. That sounds great. I would like to play first, and I'm going to... Hmm, okay. I'm going to keep this hand. I'm going to bobble immediately um, to see if I need to play out the Lion's Eye Diamond and Echo now, or I can potentially wait um, I'm gonna keep. Let's see what our opponent is doing. Savannah. Alrighty. I think that I've got a little bit of time. Um. Yeah, I'm going to take my bobble draw and my draw for turn to see what what I'm allowed to do. Mox Opal was a good one. Misty Rainforest. Okay, so they're either playing uh, really just straight green, which could be interesting, or they're playing four color control, which also means that I don't want to run out my Lion's Eye Diamond um, quite yet. Um, probably not going to be initiative. This Savannah and Misty Rainforest is going to be indicative of either uh, like a heavy green like elves or something like that, right? They're, they're not going to play anything other than forests so they can spread their fetches around or this is four color control. In which case, I'm going to actually hold out on playing anything um, and just pass the turn. There's that savanna that we know about. And if I don't draw a land this turn, I actually can just move to discard and discard the Echo of Eons. And I think that that's what I'm gonna do. I don't wanna play out the Lion's Eye Diamond right now um, because, yep, yeah, four color control, look at that rest down. That's fine. Uh, I don't want to play out the Lion's Eye Diamond without the ability to combo off immediately um, because they can have Prismatic Ending and that whole plan is ruined. So I'm just going to be a little bit patient and see how things pan out. Uh, hello, Caleb. How's it going? Welcome to the Legacy uh, ship. I don't know. I'm your captain. I have a, I have a lot of work to do on a bit. Okay, they discarded to hand size. They didn't find land three, and it's a terminus that hits the bin. Okay, we have three mana at least. Um, okay, how am I going to play this out? I could play out a Lion's Eye Diamond right now 
and they are incentivized to recognize that I am, I'm going to echo, so they're not going to counter the follow-up Mox Opal, Rite of Flame, or things like that, or they're going to immediately counter the Lion's Eye Diamond. We're gonna see. Right, like, I don't know if leading on Mox Opal was gonna be more important. Uh, I don't think so, because then, it, if I were to show them the Mox Opal first, then the Lion's Eye Diamond becomes even more important because it also turns on Metalcraft for me. So, let's see. Now the real question is, do I risk a Rite of Flame? I think I do. Play this galvanic relay which is my goal for this turn i am not going to echo or i'm not going to deploy the wish claw Ooh, minor misstep okay then they've got that i no longer can relay i'm not going to echo that's not going to happen right they have shown that they have no lands in hand they have six cards and um I'm not gonna run into a force of will that's not protected. So there's that force of will. Cool, they can do that. I'm still not going to, well, am I gonna echo now? Hmm. Yeah, sure, uh, misstep. It's not a card that I'm still used to playing against. I need to get better at that. Um, okay, so they have had Force of Will and a minor misstep as interaction, and they've pitched another dress down. They have four cards in hand. What are the likely chances that they have another Force of Will? Um, oh, Doyle, they're probably not going to play Days. This is a four-color deck. They're not seeking to play a tempo card like Days. Um, sure. Let's do it. Like, they, this is game one. They can still have removal, right? Prismatic ending, cards that don't matter against us. And they have the three pieces of interaction for us. Alrighty, let's bobble them really quick. Um, and they're drawing a wasteland, fuck. Okay. Uh, that went about as poorly as it could have gone. Um, Oh well. Can't really do anything about that. Uh, cash register, hello? Spamming the emotes, You'd love to see it. Uh, Bryshock, maybe maybe just sad Nas. Okay, so unfortunately what I would like to do here is use the Urza's Bobble to scry trick with the Verdant Catacombs, but I can't do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see one of the two cards in in their hand, which is a prismatic ending, which is just fine. Um, okay, Burning Wish was good. Let's see. Um, yeah, that's Sad Nas. That's really it. Um, well. Goffman, part of the deal is like, oh man, if you're playing eight baubles, sometimes the right one is going to be the one that you draw. Sometimes the other one is going to be uh, is going to be drawn instead. This is kind of a garbage time as far as the game goes. I'm going to keep playing it because I might end up drawing out. Um, four color control is certainly a deck that is not going to clock me very quickly outside of something like uh, a. Uh, um, Minsk and Boo. There we go. That's the Planeswalker I was thinking about. So unless they really find something um, soon, I might actually have the ability to you know, play this out. Once they play a land that's not a wasteland, I can feel comfortable F6ing through the turn. But if they catch me F6ing and they play a wasteland and wasteland my land... Um, it's gonna be really, really feel bad. 
So they exiled that Scalding Tarn and then played it. These are my grave, my opponent and I's graveyards now. Um, let's see where they are. Okay, Ponder. The last Ponder chose not to shuffle. This Ponder. Uh, oh, you'll appreciate that. Um, so my opponent chose to cast me the captain. And they chose to shuffle their library, and then they drew a card with me the captain. Just MTGO things. Um, you know, when, uh, when Bryant and I were actually paired up at one point, I actually, um, I have it, I have a screenshot that says, um, me the captain exiles Bryant Cook. It felt really good. I'd have to dig that out again. I, I need to find where that is. No shuffle off of this ponder. Oh my gosh. Okay, there's Uro. They don't have two green. They've been missing land drops. There's another one. Okay, so they have they have a six six next turn. Um, another land is good for me. Ad nauseum is not bad. I need uh one more initial mana source, and I might potentially be able to draw out of this, like we were talking about, right? Um, what are they doing? Oh, they're just fetching. Okay. Didn't want all the cards on the ponder. Oh, nice, Jason. Uh, if you're not driving, let me know what CEDH deck you're playing. If you are driving, shut up. Just don't text and drive. And then tell me about it when you get home. Okay, so they have deployed their Uro. And... I have an initial mana source. They have four cards in hand. Let's see if they drew another interaction spell. I can't do anything but go. So here we go. They had it the last time, which means they, they don't have it this time, right? That's totally what that means. Oh, they're paying costs. What do they have? Minor misstep. All right. That's fine. So the minor misstep might actually end up being like a three of, or heavens to forbid, a four of in uh, decks coming up, um, which is pretty impressive. Not going to lie. However, they did end up countering the first ritual, which is just fine by me. Uh, as long as they don't have a prismatic ending. Because I am still only one mana away from this ad nauseum. And would you look at that? So this is potentially... And they're, now they're holding up... Hardcast Force of Will. Which I'm not super excited about. Um, but we are presenting a second win... On turn 10... Right, we've had plenty of time, but they are going to hard cast a force of will, and I'll concede from there. We had our our opportunities, but they didn't end up panning out. Um, for this matchup, we're going to take out an Echo of Eons, and uh, hmm, let's see, probably a Mox Opal, and. That might be it. I don't know if four color control is running a lot of bobbles. It probably is worth. We haven't really mapped the sideboard of this uh, particular deck out. This was pretty hastily done, um, but I think that it works out just fine. We're cutting two zeros, which we are losing out on a little bit of relay equity, but we are bringing in Ave Progenitor Ooze and two Abrupt Decays. The Abrupt Decays are going to be useful for counterbalance out of the sideboard from these four color control decks. 
and we still have access to our Echo Vions if we need them. But again, in a Pyroblast matchup, they don't know we got Brainstorm. Um, it might actually end up being less likely to be good. Uh, O'Doyle actually blue, um, fair blue is one of the better matchups for uh, Storm. It's just a little iffy. Um, I um, they certainly had a very powerful hand. Uh, we didn't go in on any Galvanic relays, uh, we, which is the card that really takes things over the top as hopefully with this hand that I am definitely keeping we're going to see we're going to showcase the power of galvanic relay against fair blue decks because it doesn't matter how many force of wills they have if a galvanic relay hits the stack they don't have the interaction to beat it their point interaction their one for one or one for two interaction like force of will is not going to be able to deal with galvanic relay Flusterstorm is typically how that's dealt with, and I don't think that Flusterstorm is very good right now in the, an initiative meta, creatures, artifacts, things that Flusterstorm can't hit. Matchup profile, pretty good against blue decks, not very good against chalice decks. Combo decks is kind of 50-50, um, unless they're force of will counter de or combo decks um i meant combo decks combo decks are 50 50 unless they're blue combo decks like doomsday cephalid breakfast blue black reanimator um and then we're typically better in the storm mirror pseudo mirror like ad nauseum tendrils versus the epic storm we're a little bit faster okay so their ponder chose to shuffle. Oh, Dominic, hey, welcome back. Um, hmm. Let's see what they do with this Rite of Flame on the stack. They might counter it. Nope, they don't. Okay, we're going in on a Galvanic Relay and we're gonna burn the additional Mox Opal to do so. Um, we're gonna get a Bayou so that we have Plateau and Bayou as our color pair um, for now. Um, it gives us all four colors. Bacon, chicken, casserole. That sounds really tasty. I haven't eaten dinner yet. Ooh, they get to see Orm's Chant and Veil of Summer, but we don't have any action. Um, I guess what I'm gonna do, yeah, Gavin, Galvanic Relay, okay, is, I guess I can bobble them at their end step. I don't really need to worry about bobbling them until then, but don't let me forget, bobble in the end step. Sometimes I forget. Prismatic ending, okay, that's fine. I do have, artifacts okay end step I see a savannah okay um oh yeah I've been hearing about wild ice storms in other parts of the country um I don't know if you're US based or not but I am looking forward to that this weekend apparently this weekend is apparently going to be ridiculous so our bobble draw is a dark ritual, and then we have another land. Um, okay, so let's start off with an Orm's Chant targeting our opponent. They actually, I think, have to respect this. Mountain Walk, hey, welcome to the family. Uh, thank you for becoming a YouTube member. You get access to all of those really cool emotes. Uh, none with my face on it, so they're not that cool. Oh man, my opponent didn't respect the Orm's chant. And um, speaking of no respect, I have a cat that is not respecting the sanctity of the stream. He's been pretty good so far. Um, 
I'm a little upset that my opponent decided to not respect the, the chant. I am going to Veil here anyway. I want it in my graveyard in case I do end up echoing. And I want this Chromox on the battlefield. Um, oh, the Texas of the North, welcome. Yeah, I am uh, a little north of the Texas of the South from Oklahoma. Um, I guess I should bobble them. Okay, they have a lot of lands. I know that two of the seven cards that they're gonna see next turn are lands. Hmm. And we have a lot of lands ourselves. Uh, wow, that is not ideal. Um, there's only 12. There's only 12? I think there's only 12. Yeah, there's only 12 lands here. And we have seen almost half of them. Actually, technically more. Than, we have seen half of them. Yeah. Oh, boy. Um, all right. Let's see what our opponent wants to do. Oh, pretty nasty snow in Canada, for sure. And Seamus Crawford is from Canada too. A lot of Canadians here today. That's pretty cool. Um, I've been to Canada a few times. Um, the Canadian Crown Land Wilderness and uh, Ottawa, Canada for a cousin of mine's wedding. The biggest wedding I've ever been to. Um, it's pretty insane, actually. I liked Canada. <laughs> Caleb, nice. The goblins. The goblins are here. Yes, absolutely, Mountain Walk. Um, anything but a land and a Chromox. And nothing but no mana. Let's, let's see no mana here. What is my opponent doing? It's my upkeep. Uh, hamster, it's snowing in Cali. Uh, that's kind of crazy. Unless you're like North California, in which case it's not that unlikely, right? Okay, Burning Wish was good. I'm going to hold off on casting it until I find some protection. Um, never go off without protection, folks. Mm, we are actually kind of close to like Burning Wishing into Pier. We could totally do that at some point. Um, but I still want some protection. Um, Seamus, I would suggest not walking outside. That's what I would do. I would suggest staying inside, catching a nice, chill, relaxed magic stream, and then maybe watching some other videos on the channel afterwards. Um, So something tells me a lot of these lands have been shuffled away with that brainstorm. Um, hmm. Oh, somebody clipped that. I'm very, very wise. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they have another land, which they play. And a ponder. And survey says. Chose to shuffle. Okay. Seven cards in hand for our opponent. I'm going to fetch in the upkeep. That fresh thinning and. Um, okay. This is pretty interesting. I have the Marsh Flats to get the last card, and I cannot fetch a Taiga with the Marsh Flats, so I need to get the Taiga now. Um, okay, we are, we are getting there. I just need a silence or a veil of summer, preferably two, preferably three. At this point, there's not three protection spells in the deck anymore. There's only one chant and one veil of summer. Um, I would really like a galvanic relay. That's what I would really like. Because I can threaten all kinds of things with this Burning Wish. 
which they have to interact with, and then I can Galvanic Relay. So, okay, here's a question that I have for y'all. Um, do I crack this Marsh Flats? Um, I'm not brainstorming, right? I cannot brainstorm fetch for a perfect brainstorm. The only thing is going to be for a Mishra's Bobble. I have uh, three, three left in the deck. Um, I think um, I'm going to leave it. Okay. So they're not clocking. Magus and Old Stick Fingers and Dihada. All right. Those are pretty, some pretty slick commanders. I need to play some CEDH again. Uh, O'Doyle, yes, I do have a... Ooh, wow. Fat Teferi. Or Family Teferi. Sorry. Um, big Teferi. This is the five mana one. Which is wild to see in a Wasteland deck. But, okay, it resolves. Um, O'Doyle, there is a relay in the sideboard. Absolutely. However, an opponent with a fuck ton of cards in their hand, like my opponent has and not presenting any threat really to with ex with the exception of now um i don't think that my burning wish is going to resolve cold certainly not um so yeah this is their this is the secret lair to fairy um it's actually really cool art um yeah secret lair drop i don't remember the theme of it but it's pretty cool oh hey that's pretty decent Okay, they have six cards. They would need two points of interaction. Um, black is magic, absolutely. Oh yes, Bryant, Bryant is. Yes. I've clicked that it's uh, not for kids, but I should probably watch that. Mm. Okay, so what I can do is Start off with a burning wish, which resolves. Wow. Okay. Do I get a Thoughtseize here? I think that I get a Thoughtseize. This is game two. I lost game one. Um,. Okay, so let's thought seize them. This is probably gonna get minor misstepped. Yep, look at that. Uh, do they have more interaction? Almost certainly. So I'm gonna pass the turn. I'm not gonna play directly into interaction that I know is there. Um, my Burning Wish protected itself from surgical extraction, right? Um, it exiled after it resolved, so I didn't have to worry about that. Hmm. Oh, what 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 were we just talking about? Surgical extraction? Okay. Look at that. I was actually gonna bring up that I played the Burning Wish before deploying a lot of my other cards. So I would have to play the Burning Wish next um, to play around surgical extraction if I wanted to. Um Okay, so they just took out one card, right? There's only two Orm's Chance in the deck. I have one Veil of Summer as protection in 37 cards. And let's see what happens. So they know my entire hand. They have an Uro. Is that, nope, okay. We're gonna EI. Tyga. And... Hmm. 
Mystic Sanctuary. They're targeting probably a minor misstep. Yep, minor misstep. Yep, you get your misstep. Um, I should probably pop out the graveyards. They're kind of big now. I'm going to guess that my opponent doesn't have Savannah Tropical Island in their hand anymore. Um, that was a long time ago. Uh, one of the Stick Fingers decks that's in the database. The well, all right. I'm glad that are you are you iterating on it? Are you building from that? Or are you sticking with what you have? Because uh, you always need to be evaluating what's good and what's not good, what's working, what's not working, and uh, improving constantly. Let's see if we can beat this three turn clock. We have one protection spell and some galvanic relays that can do it. Uh, okay. Well, I wonder. If they would minor missed up a dark ritual. They won't. How about a burning wish? Are you gonna counter it? You can hard cast a force if you have enough lands. Really not sure if there are enough lands in the deck. It might be a hard cast force of will. Okay. Mm, basic island. There's a lot of lands in these kinds of decks for sure. Oh, another mystic sanctuary. Okay, are we playing are we playing Thwart? Where, uh, oh boy, where's Phil Blackman when you need him? Thwart is potentially here. Okay, Hardcast Force. We kind of figured that. Uh, I'm just gonna do the thing here. If they have it, I, I don't think that it's gonna get any better. They have five cards in hand. One of them is a minor misstep. I know that. Four, five, six, seven. I should actually fetch to get the last land. Yeah, okay. They had force. Uh, one, two, three, ugh, okay. This is not looking good. Uh, we have yet to see a uh, Wish Claw Talisman, which would be really nice here. I could immediately add Nauseam. Um, I do think that this is a little bit of a poor showing, um, but it could be the fact that, you know, well, we haven't seen uh, Urza's Bobbles besides the first one, which was ended, would end, what, ugh speaking is hard um the first urza's bobble was good because we were able to galvanic relay with it um it was better than a brainstorm at that point and we haven't seen another bobble to compare it to brainstorm in the future um but it's not looking like the greatest um two mystic sanctuaries is definitely not normal gavin is correct yeah um and their hand was pretty good in game one. Okay, there's a brainstorm from our opponent. Um, yeah, two Mystic Sanctuaries is very odd. Having a non-basic island, not even a dual land, just an island, is uh, very strange. I wonder if this is Mystic Sanctuary number three. Because if you were to cast Thwart for its alternate cost of returning three islands to your hand, you can counter a spell and rebuy Mystic Sanctuaries. And Mystic Sanctuary um, and Thwart can potentially be a soft block from your opponent. Prismatic Ending. Okay, I'm going to... 
um, activate its ability so that it doesn't get exiled. And then I can... Actually, what are they doing here? Minsk and Boo. Okay, this is... Uh, I need to do something next turn. Um, if I were to draw... If I were to draw exactly ad nauseum, then I could present another threat. Yeah, Gavin. Um, mm -hmm. You're correct. Oh, <laughs> we got a chance. Okay. Uh, let's try it. Okay. Uh, this is not likely to resolve. Yeah, they have a force of will. Okay, sure. <laughs> oh, man. We tried. We tried our best. It didn't end up getting there. Uh, we do have a loss, our first loss of the night. Uh, that was pretty exciting. Uh, we had some highs and lows on the last 20 seconds of that match for sure. Um, cool boy. Okay. They cast uh, three Force of Wills that game. That was pretty good. Uh, surgical Extraction was really good. Ment uh, the Not Mental Misstep. Um, minor Misstep looked pretty good against us. Um, but sometimes you don't get there. And that's just fine. Uh, Galvanic Relay ended up not working out as well as it usually does against these control decks. A lot of the time we can um, we can relay on turn on a on a turn, and then that will chain into an additional relay, and we kind of start snowballing these relays into uh, really strong protective combo turns. Um, I did not consider getting good. I should have listened to you, my sage mentor. But um, if you want to listen to my sage mentor in Brian Cook, this is one hell of a segue, oh my god, um, then you can listen to him on a podcast episode that he just released this morning with the eternal glory. Let me tell you just a little bit about it. The best legacy podcast? That would be Eternal Glory featuring myself, Bryant Cook, alongside Brian Cobal and Phil Gallagher. We're available on all major podcast platforms and YouTube. All right. Uh, Nick Fishman. The list actually is going to be in the stream description. Uh, it's going to be a Moxfield link, uh, just like just down there. Um, and and you can take out take a look at the link for the eight bobble list. All right, I would like to play first now. Um, this is a great hand. My opponent wishes me good luck. Good luck to you, too. Um, I am keeping this hand. We are going to make some goblins. Uh, Urza's Bobble looking significantly better than Brainstorm here. Absolutely. Um, so all of the... YouTube members, Gavin's already on it. Uh, let's see those goblin emotes. And if you don't have the ability to emote like you want to, whenever we're going to make a bunch of goblins or rip at a sick ad nauseum that turns into a sad nauseum when it gets countered with a force of will, um, then you can always join in on the fun by becoming a member. Let's see what happens. All right, let's float a red. We're going all in on turn one. Survey says we don't even need to make the goblins. I need you to make the goblins for me. <laughs> Become a YouTube member and show me how many goblins I would actually get. Hint, it's it's seven. It's 14. It's a seven storm. Uh, so that was a little unfortunate. I didn't get to go all the way. Uh, I didn't even get to bobble them uh, to see what they were playing, which I guess I should have thought about. Um, 
a little bit of a minor misstep from me. Okay. Sideboarding in the blind. What can we assume? They're not going to be a deck that was able to combo us on the first or second turn. So that's good to know. Um, hmm. I think that I'm okay just resubmitting until we know better. The alternative is that we could bring in a couple of abrupt decays as a hedge uh, for some of the permanent based spells that are permanent based hate that we might encounter like Null Rod, like Thalia, like things like that. Um, which I don't hate. Uh, yeah, let's try that. Let's take out the Veil of Summers and bring in the Abrupt Decays just as a little bit of a hedge. I don't know if this is gonna be correct, um, but we're gonna try it. Alex McKinley in the chat. Oh my gosh. Yeah, look at these baubles. This is so much better. Um, I'm gonna keep this. Oh, we're playing against Death's Shadow. And they might be holding up a minor misstep. Who knows? Uh, with that, I'm not really anywhere close to a relay. I mean, I guess I am kind of close with the Wishclaw Talisman, but I'm closer to Ad Nauseam if that's the case. So I'm going to burn this bobble. Um... Mm -hmm. By one day? Wait, what am I doing? I don't know who's lying. One day error, really not sure. What did I miss? Okay. Goblin, 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 goblin. Goblins is pretty good against Death Shadow. Uh, mac and cheese at 9.30. That is not even, like, prime nighttime gremlin hours. Those are after 9.30. That's significantly after 9.30. That's, you wake up in the middle of the night at 1.30 and you start making mac and cheese. Those are the times the mac and cheese really slaps. Uh, let's hope so, Dominic. I hope that the they're not going to win. They are certainly considering quite a bit about this uh, cantrip. Uh, Moxfield link seems to be broken. That is really unfortunate. I'm going to have to try to fix that. But let me show you the deck list as my opponent resolves their brainstorm. Um, we're playing Bobbles, and instead of the Silences, we're bringing in Veil of Summers. We have Abrupt Decay and Ave in the sideboard um, instead of a Pulverize and Slaughter Pact. And then we have our mana base to make it all work out. Okay, they've played a land and they've fetched. And they have shocked a watery grave. Are they going to thought seize me? They are indeed going to thought seize me. I wonder if they're going to take the wish claw talisman or the lion's eye diamond. Okay. End step. I will bobble their hand. I see a grief. Okay. Aha, thought sees bug. Uh, do I want to play that out? Hmm. I... 
don't want to play it into a daze, that's for sure. But I... Now that's a little weird. Verdant Catacombs can only get Scrubland as a white source. So if I, I can't get the Plateau with the Verdant Catacombs, that's fine. But just a little bit of a weird thing. Um, what I think I'm going to do is play out things to get around discard and potentially relay this turn. It'd be a relay for five if this resolves. Nope, it's not gonna resolve. Okay, pitching a Merktide Regent. One one. They have three cards in hand. One of them is a grief. The other one is, well, probably um, saw the same grief, but okay. So. I do have a removal for their Death Shadow. This was sideboarded in the blind. Normally, I do not bring in Abrupt Decay for uh, for Death Shadow. They are not a deck that plays Counterbalance, right? Um, but we can see about removing this threat if it gets any bigger. Plenty of mana. So I'm less incentivized to imprint this abrupt decay under a chrome mox, for example, right? Um, depending on what they do before combat, this is going to be for four. I'm content taking four just to see if anything happens before end step, and then I will abrupt decay. Sometimes they play the court of, um, okay, this is a Merktide Regent, uh, Court of Cunning, is that the, the three mana aura? Um, it's not an aura, it's probably just an enchantment. Either way, Abrupt Decay the Death Shadow. They have a 6-6. Six, six. Um, so it's not quite a turn two clock, but I really do want to find something to do other than twiddle my thumbs. I should have been more specific. I can twiddle my thumbs. That is technically something to do. But... Um, We'll see how it ends up going. Wasteland. That is not very important to me. Um, however, that does allow them to hard cast a grief, um, which presents lethal on the crackback, which I think is what they're gonna do instead of wastelanding me. Yep. Okay. So they can take uh, probably a Mox Opal, right? Because that's kind of like a mini ritual um, in this case, just in case I, I need the mana. Uh, oh, they took a Chrome Mox. That's so stupid. Why would you do that? I'm not gonna imprint anything. Well, okay, that's good. That was a good draw. 
Uh, Dominique, I I don't watch much. I have in the past. Um, what am I doing here? I'm gonna cast. Peer into the abyss. They have two cards in hand. I'm probably gonna cast Peer into the abyss. Uh, if that's the case, I do want to fetch. Um, I'm one storm away from a leaf. Oh my gosh, they just have it. Okay, okay, that's fine. Uh, we'll go to game three. Game three. Um, sorry, uh, Dominic. I've watched uh, Attack on Titan and some of My Hero Academia. Um, that's about it. Okay, now that I know what I'm facing, the Abrupt Decays are going to come out. I'm going to swap out Echo Vions for this Ave Progenitor Ooze. And... Uh, bring back, what did I take out? The Veil of Summers. The Veil of Summers seem pretty good. Definitely want those. And then resubmit. Um, we'll see how it goes. And on the play for game three. Ugh, unkeepable, unfortunately. This is quite keepable. Uh, I'm gonna keep this and I'm gonna bottom the Chrome Mox. Um, yeah. Okay, is, uh, hold up, let me do a quick search. Is Death Shadow playing more than four force effects? Um, it does not look like it. Okay, I think I'm going to turn one um, a Wish Claw Talisman here. It's not protected by a Veil of Summer, but I want to play this around discard as much as possible. That just resolved. Okay. Um, so, yeah, they have four forces. I was wondering if they were going to be playing Force of Negation. That was the other thing that I was moderately worried about. And I can use my Veil of Summer now that they didn't discard it immediately. They could still grief. I shouldn't say we're out of the woods yet. They can still have grief. But their ponder... Um, Chose not to shuffle. Okay. That was good. We're one mana away from a protected Echo of Eons, uh, which could have been drawn off of this bobble if I was thinking. Um, it honestly looked like a like a lotus petal. Anything like black or black retro bordered. Um, I'm used to being able to crack new framed cards, not old framed cards. Okay, so let's Veil of Summer, see if this resolves. And if it does, then we get a card. And we get a card. Um, lovely, you love to see it. Uh, let's see, this is definitely a an ad nauseum. We'll see if it's a protected ad nauseum. They have Death Shadow. Cool. A Galvanic Relay. Hmm. Uh, 
do I Dark Ritual a Galvanic Relay? Because I still have the option of Ad Nauseum on the following turn. Um, end step Nas. No, Wish Claw Talisman is only activated during my turn. It can be activated at instant speed. I can use it on uh, on my turn at instant speed, uh, but it can only be activated during my turn. I think I want to relay for two. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna relay for two. I am gonna fetch. I don't want to draw the lands. Uh, what do I get with Badlands? Badlands is my odd card. Okay, so I'll go with a uh, Scrubland. Oh no! That's ridiculous. Okay. Can I save this by ad nauseing? This is ridiculous. I am in my upkeep. Uh, hmm. It's been a long day and it's starting to show. So I can ad nause. Um, damn it. Uh, let's just pass into our, our draw step and main phase. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna add those now. I am now going to uh, just wait. <clears throat> hmm. That one felt pretty bad. Uh, I, I just oh, drew a card. Yep, absolutely. Now it's my main phase. I cracked a bobble and just uh, a little out of practice, I suppose. Thank you for all of those that caught it. Uh, I didn't. Neil, uh, you've met, missed a couple of really cool 2-0 matches and then a grindy and unfortunately unsuccessful matchup uh, against four color control. And now we're in round four against Death Shadow. And we have a protected Ad Nauz. Um, yeah, Polsky, uh, how's it going first off? And yes, we definitely still have a potential win here. Uh, and yes, we can still 4-1 for sure. Um, okay, so they have Force of Will pitching a daze. Huh. Now, I don't want to add Nas. Like, I get that that was kind of the point, but they have yet to produce any serious clock. They have been missing mana. Uh, they obviously have interaction if they are not doing anything else. So I am okay spending a little bit more time overwhelming their interaction. Yeah, see this? I couldn't have paid for a daze. Do they have another days or a uh, spell pierce or something? I don't know. Uh, the Lion's Eye Diamond, by the way, is um, more precious to me than a random card off of the top. A random card off of the top is not going to be as good as a Lion's Eye Diamond is, which is why I didn't use it to pay for a daze. Uh, let's see what happens here. Do they have another days? Wow. Okay. Um, yeah. What were we just saying about an opponent that had a lot of interaction in hand? Um, hmm. The Urza's Bobbles are pretty good. Uh, I like them quite a bit. 
Uh, we revealed a Mishra's bobble. We can see how good a bobble is. Okay. They have deployed their 1-1 one, one threat. The bigger it gets, the easier it is to kill them. Um, Nick, I don't know if it was necessarily wrong on our opponent's part to double days. Um, with the amount of mana that I have available now, I don't know if they were going to be able to have another opportunity for it. Uh, I think that it was a reasonable choice by our opponent. So they're likely going to make their Death Shadow a 3-3, three, three, potentially a 4-4 four, four if they fetch instead of playing the Shock Land that I know that they already have in hand. Um, Three, three. Their Dragon's Rage Channeler wannabe card is a little bit less card advantage-y and more snowball-y. Uh, okay, so they have a Thought Season hand that I know about. I am going into my main phase after drawing my card, and I can just kill them out right now. Uh... So these Wishclaw Talismans are now Lion's Eye Diamonds. You don't see that yet, but they are just, well, Lion's Eye Diamonds or uh, like a Mox Opal or something like that. Oh, I don't need to worry about Peer into the Abyss. They're at 10. Uh, they're going to die very shortly. I could also have aved. That might have been fun. Uh, but I don't need to do that. What am I going to do here? I just get a lotus petal. Okay, I'm going to hold control and cast this Burning Wish. And get Tendrils of Agony. All copies targeting my opponent for exactly lethal. Look at that. Alrighty. And I remembered this time we are now three and one. Cool. Yeah, recovered from the upkeep ritual. That was for sure a little bit of a feels bad, but it ended up not mattering. Our opponent was luckily allowing us plenty of time to recover from that, um, which is pretty all right. Yeah, five drills for the win. Absolutely. So got to clean up a little bit of that mess that I made there, and um, it worked out pretty cool. So we're... Uh, Going into the fifth round, thanks for still watching us. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about our socials so that once this stream is over, you can actually take a look at when we're streaming next, which is going to be next Thursday, by the way. And uh, you can get notified on Twitter or check out our Discord, and I'll notify you guys there as well. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. Alrighty. So... You can make sure to follow all of our accounts there, join our Discord, and you can enjoy some of the extra bits of perks that you get from 
all of the cool, the epic storm information that's kind of floating around there. Um, so Nick, I could have actually played around a lot of dazes there. Um, if they had two dazes, um, I didn't actually need to get lion's eye diamonds there. I did because I knew that they didn't have multiple dazes, but I could, could have gotten lotus petals because I only had, I had the one lion's eye diamond and then I could have gotten all of the rest of them to pay for dazes. Um, Okay, we're playing against a fairly well-known streamer. Um, let's crush him. There's a lot of redraws. I'm on the draw, speaking of which. Um, would I play Doomsday? I... If I were to know all of the lines of Doomsday already, I would play Doomsday. But I don't know if I want to spend the time learning all of the lines of Doomsday. Um, hmm. Okay. Ottawara, this eight cast, some kind of combo deck. That was good. Um, I just need cards. Okay. Um, See what happens. Brainstorm. Scalding Tarn. Okay. This is interesting. That's for sure. I wonder if this is Grixis. Hmm. The land is not the worst here. Um, I'll take the land. Uh, well, okay. I asked and I received. <laughs> wow, a uh, very interesting mana base from my opponent. I would not think that an island is... Oh, are we Stifle Knot? Yeah, there's Phyrexian Dreadnought right there. Look at that. Uh, okay, so they're going to put in a big 12-12. Look at that. And we have a little less time than I would have hoped. So this is enough mana to Burning Wish into a Galvanic Relay. Um, if I wanted to sell that, I probably should have... ...not played my land out. It stands 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay. So they might have a lightning bolt and kill me. Uh, 
but this is going to be a relay for five. And we'll see what happens. Mox Opal, Urza's Bobble, Rite of Flame, Mox Opal, Dark Ritual. Eww. So the top of our deck needs to be very nice to us. Okay. Never mind. We never got to see uh, the, the, the top of our deck. Okay. So they're fairly aggressive. I don't want this ad nauseum. Um... I don't want to play the control deck here, right? I'm not going to bring in things like Prismatic Ending. Um, the Abrupt Decays seem reasonable um, because of Counterbalance. Uh, prismatic Ending is significantly less great against Counterbalance. Um, and then I can cut things like a Bobble and an Opal. Um, Yeah, I think that that's fine. The Ad Nauseum is being cut because our main win condition now is Ave and Relay. We have Burning Wish for the Peer into the Abyss or the Thoughtseize or an Echo, right? But um, with our life total being as aggressively pursued as it is, Ad Nauseum is not something that we can traditionally rely on. So onwards and upwards. The last round, uh, can we clench the last two uh, games in the match against uh, blue-red um, Stifle Knot? Or, well, they might be playing Stifle. I'm going to assume that they're playing Stifle because I am a put a trigger on the stack that kills you deck. I would like to very much know if I need to play around Stifle. Hmm. This is not gonna do. This will do. I'm gonna keep this. I'm gonna bottom the burning wish. Okay, I need an additional mana and because of that, I am going to bobble. I really need that extra mana so that I can like lean into this relay I'll use the bobble this one is a nice bobble that I can use to actually scry and hopefully wow basic mountain okay engineered explosives is a good card against galvanic relay Bobble myself, see a taiga. That is the mana that I needed. Uh, oof. Man, that EE is right there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm not going to play out the second Lion's Eye Diamond. Uh, well, let's see if this Rite of Flame resolves first. That needs to happen. It did. So let's see, I can get a Scrubland and get all four colors here and I'll play out one lion's eye diamond hopefully incentivize them to destroy it with their engineered explosives and then I have another one waiting in the wings so bloodstained mire mox opal burning wish not bad I have a protected echo of eons next turn even when they crack the engineered explosives so like I'm not upset about this at all Urza Saga, this all makes sense. So they're a Urza Saga blue red deck. If they are in fact destroying it, it's okay. Everything is working. They have two cards and three card types in their graveyard. Ooh, Rite of Flame was nice. Uh, let's get a Badlands, I think. 
and Rite of Flame. That's nice that it resolved for me. Uh, Burning Wish. Echo Protected, perhaps? Maybe, maybe not. Okay, they have a Force of Will. And they exiled a Stifle. Hey, we know about it now. They should probably keep it on top just to not show me information. So that actually kind of tells me that this is going to resolve. Uh, let's hope so, anyway. And it does. Look at that. Okay, let's see what we have here. We've got one, two, three, four, five mana. That's not enough. Um, hmm. That's kind of unfortunate. So I can play out this Wish Claw Talisman and the Bobbles, because I'll need to draw. Um, or do I wait and use the Wish Claw Talisman next turn for another relay? Um, that's not the worst idea. And then have a really powerful turn five. Yeah, I'm okay with that. What do you guys think? Should I have played out the baubles to draw some more cards this turn or wait and have a more powerful Galvanic Relay turn next turn? Obviously dependent on what I plan on drawing. Oh, we are really, we're really leaning into the basics here. That's pretty surprising. Maybe they're just splashing blue for the Stifles and the Dress Towns, and they're like a base red deck. I have no idea. This is interesting. Lion's Eye Diamond was a good draw. Okay. So what I can do is bobble them right now. Maybe I'll get some information. They have a Brainstorm. Okay. I'm going to imprint this Abrupt Decay. I don't think that it's a card that I need to concern myself with. I did shuffle their engineered explosives back, but they can't get it with Urza Saga, for what it's worth. Um, oh yeah, Gavin, the Urza Saga dress down deck, absolutely. A little bit of a non-bow, but the Urza Saga does get yourself a nice big fat 12-12, so. It's not the worst thing ever. Um, oh yeah, I have Ave. Oh my gosh, Nick, thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have that thing that we like playing. Um, oh my gosh, really should uh, not give up the goat like that. I'm just not used to playing with the ooze yet. Definitely, definitely the right decision. Playing with an ooze. Uh, now, this was a little risky, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, because they could, they are a dress down deck, as we just discussed, and I would have an army of two twos instead of seven, six, five, four, three, two. Uh, yes, Nick just pointed that out actually so yep uh luckily it didn't end up mattering and i've got a large army um i can bobble scry with this bloodstained mire which i should actually probably think about doing 
after my Urza's Bobble draw, because if I have an Urza's Bobble draw that draws me an Orm's Chant, I can Chant Walk them, which could be particularly nice. Oh, they have the dress down. Oh, they wanted, ah, they wanted a 12-12. And actually, they potentially get two 12-12s. Okay. Interesting. Uh, I should actually just do this now. Veil Summer is not a card that I want. This Bloodstained Mire can get a plateau. I was thinking that I needed the Mox Opal to be turned on with Metalcraft that I was gonna lose when I cracked the bobble. That's just not the case. Okay, so I'm gonna fetch and get a plateau. And I have two draws at a two of. The Rite of Flame is not it, and Dark Ritual is not it, but that's fine. I still have a large-ish army, so we might be able to make it work. Uh, they get a 12-12, congratulations. Yes, we knew. Uh, they have a Darcy. And then are they gonna use the Talisman to get another 12-12? No. Okay. Now these Darcy's are all on. Wow. Huh. This ended up being pretty good for them. Not that good. I wonder if they have counter magic. Okay, so they block a 2-2, two, two, they block a 3-3, three, three, they block a 7-7, seven, seven, they take lethal still no 15 15 okay they have five cards in hand well we're gonna go to combat and i am going to attack with all they're gonna go to three nope okay they're just going to trade off all of their Darcy's. Wow. I was thinking that they were going to make a little bit more conservative blocks, but that's also okay. They do win with Bolt. Does they, do they end step, fetch for a uh, mountain and Bolt me? Oh, well, they might not have Bolt in their deck though. Usually not a very good card against Storm. Okay. Losing to Bolt in back-to-back uh, -back games is not... Oh! Okay, well, this explains the basics. Uh, yeah, they probably don't have Bolt in their deck. All right. Well... That was a uh, a chance at a 4-1. We ended up with a 3-2, but uh, we got Price of Progress, which uh, ended up being pretty good against us. We don't have any basics, and that does... I mean, I was talking about, oh, wow, why they're playing Prismatic Vistas? Why do they have all these basic lands? Um, my initial thought went to Blood Moon, but that was negated because they were the Urza Saga deck. Um, 
but I never really kind of finished that thought, and I appreciate my opponent spending the time to actually educate me <laughs> in uh, figuring out what the hell they were doing with uh, so many basic lands. Um, but let's uh, let's open up this chest really quick. Let's open up the chest to see what we get um, as our pity chest. We get sun sunweb. It's not letting, oh, there we go, Sunweb, okay, and Chef's Kiss. Cooked to perfection, just like Jason's mac and cheese. And five play points, okay. Uh, I'll take it. I had a lot of fun with this stream. I'm glad that you guys were all hanging out with me. These Mishra's Bobble, Urza Bobble, all eight bobbles actually ended up feeling really good when we were able to hit a relay. Um, Obviously, sometimes they were a little bit rough to draw off of the top of a deck, but with that, uh, just like Brainstorm, they were able to kind of play around a little bit of discard that we were seeing against Death Shadow. Um, we could just play the bobble and not crack it until our opponent's turn, so we would draw it on our upkeep. So um, just like Brainstorm, we were able to play around discard a little bit. Um, I think that the bobbles felt pretty good when we were trying to ave, right? Uh, obviously, it wasn't quite enough for uh, our opponent to not kill us, but man, we gave him a price of progress. That was not gonna really go any other way. Um, the Veil of Summers, I love playing with Veil of Summer. Veil of Summer is significantly better in my mind um, against the blue decks, but we're not seeing a lot of blue decks right now. Obviously we came up against three of them um, in our match, uh, or our league, I suppose. Uh, but Orm's Chant is, is really just, man, this is great against the initiative. It's great against non-blue decks. It's not a dead card in our main deck, right? Um, it was here for Mind Break Trap, and it has stuck around because it's such a powerful card. Uh, Brup Decay, we really didn't have an opportunity to see it being used to its highest efficiency, removing a counterbalance, right? Um, and then we did actually get to ooze. We got to ooze, we got to empty the warrens, we got to tendrils, we got to do a lot of really cool stuff. And thank you very much for hanging out and watching it all. I'm going to catch you around, but uh, I'll be back next Thursday, 7 Central Time, 8 Eastern, what is that, 5 Pacific. So I'll catch you around. Have a good night.